Hello everybody, this is Brian from Trimac, and today I just received shipment of our new Zeiss T-Scan Hawk 2, and I'm excited to share with you the unboxing. When I first opened up the box, the first thing that came out was the two carbon fiber scale bars. These are one meter scale bars that are used for satellite mode. We use this when we need to measure something between 1.2 meters and 4 meters long. Smaller than 1.2 meters, we can just use the scanner by itself, and bigger than 4 meters, we would need the Zeiss Tritop kit. Next thing that comes out is a packet with some documentation, calibrations, and certifications and such. And then I was able to locate the main box with the scanner and calibration boards and cords and targets inside. So I took a quick look at the scanner. It's a really nice piece of construction has the main cord already attached. So I decided to pull it out and take a look before continuing with uh, pulling out all the other stuff that we had ordered with it. I also took a moment to install the smaller uh, quick calibration scale bar into the foam on the lid of the case. This will be used for uh, not the full calibration protocol, but for a quick calibration for the full calibration. You'll see later in this video, I'll be using the calibration board, which is under the foam insert in the case. So packing that up and putting it aside, let's take a look and see the next thing I found was kind of a shrink wrapped bundle of a whole bunch of different stuff. The little black boxes here are where we find our targets. We ordered some spares. Uh, you get a couple in the case with the scanner, but the targets are primarily the little uh, adhesive backed. But I also fished around at this point because I knew we had ordered uh, a new item that's available, which is the magnetic targets that can be reusable for when you're scanning, uh, you know, ferrous metal objects that magnets will stick to. This will be a, a big convenience to be able to reuse those, as will be this next item, the uh, magnetic reference pillars. Uh, these are just some magnetic pillars that will be able to stick targets all over and be able to quickly put targets onto the reference area. And then I also found a, a spare cable that came with the kit. Next thing that came out is the laptop. It took me a minute to get this out of the, uh, the bubble wrap, but took a quick look at the laptop case. This one that I'm pulling out is a Dell 7770. But if you're watching this video, into the future, uh, we, they may update this as new models come out. Uh, the laptop model number has changed a few times over the years. So laptop preloaded with all of the software and calibrations and things that we need to get started right away. Next thing I found was the 400 millimeter rotation table. It's just a simple uh, kind of lazy Susan setup that'll be used to scan. It's stainless steel, so the magnetic pillars will stick to it. That's going to be a big help. And then that pretty much covers everything we found here. I'm going to give you a better look at the scanner near the camera, and then we'll pull everything upstairs and take our first scan. All right, so we want to fire up the GOM software here. And the key to this is we want to open it up by first opening the Zeiss Quality Suite. And from there, we will open up GOM Inspect Professional, which is the first option under software. We're going to pick a new project. And it's immediately recognizing the T-Scan Hawk. I'm going to move into the T-Scan Hawk 2 workspace right on the left side of the screen. And I'm going to jump into the calibration protocol. It's going to ask me for the temperature in the room. I think that's about accurate. And let's take a look at how this works. It kind of gives us a guideline of where we want to hold relative to the board. And I can immediately see that I have placed my board upside down how I ought to have. And what's really cool here, I'll turn up the volume so you can hear, it's going to kind of bump every time I hit these positions. I don't need to be perfect, but it's very, very responsive to my movement. It's really a slick way that they've put together this 
user interface, make it really easy to give the system what it needs to calibrate. I'm gonna speed up the video here. Uh, the entire process ended up taking roughly two minutes on my first try. And when you get better at this, it can go faster. Of course, once this system is calibrated, you don't need to go through this all again. You would just do the quick calibration bar and it would take maybe 20 seconds. All right, so it is that easy to calibrate the scanner. Uh, these calibration boards you want to take good care of, so I'm immediately going to put it back away in case. So now that that's put away, I, I normally would, uh, would not do that full calibration procedure every time I'm going to scan. We've got this little quick calibration bar right in the setup, so if I were to need to uh, do a quick calibration right before taking it out. If I've already done the full calibration previously, there's an almost instantaneous procedure where I would just calibrate off of that bar. I already had uh, targets that are gonna work from another scanner. So we're just gonna go in here and I want you to notice, I'm not gonna be touching the mouse. By hitting the right button on the uh, scanner, I can go right into this really easy workspace and click through. I'm gonna go with the default template I'm using reference points on the part. Uh, I can adjust the, uh, the temperature to match that in the room. And we're gonna pick up the reference points now. Really cool thing, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but we have this crosshair on whatever we point the scanner at. And I want to adjust my distance so that the center of the two bars match up. If I'm too far or too close, it turns kind of into a letter T. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on uh, on the camera here, but I'm going to hit the trigger button to start capturing points. And the system's also going to ding at me anytime I get too close or too far away. I may mute that for the purposes of this video because it can get a little bit annoying. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to jump to the next part of the procedure. It asked me to define the background plane. And a really easy way to do that is to have a couple of cards with some targets already set up on them. And I'm gonna do another step of capturing where any new targets define this uh, planar cutoff. And you see on the screen, it's gonna offset that up by three millimeters. I can adjust that height if I wanted to, if I've got a, a less of a flat surface I might need to do that. So I'm gonna accept that and jump right into scanning. Now, I'm gonna keep most of the default settings here, but there's a lot I could adjust using the buttons on the scanner. And I'm just gonna kinda zoom in here using the buttons. And I'm gonna try and be careful not to stick my hand into the scan area so that you don't see copies of my fingers coming up on the screen. And I'm going to tell it that I want to scan another side. So I'm just repeating the procedure from before. I'm going to use the trigger button to pick up the reference points and scan again. And any of these reference points that overlap between side A and side B are going to be able to be used to bring the two halves together. All right, got to find the background plane again. This can be really quick. It just needs the briefest look at the new targets on these two cards. I'll put them face down now, and we're going to scan. All right, here we go. Get in a little closer. It's really nice to be able to zoom in and out dynamically using the buttons on the scanner. And boy, does this thing work quickly. If I had picked an even smaller uh, field of view and I wanted less resolution, bigger point spacing, I'd be able to get away with moving even faster. All depends on what we want on a particular job. 
And another cool thing I'll show real quickly is we can change the projection mode to deep pockets. And now you see we get just a single laser line and we can get much, much further into these longer holes. We'll just get one of the two deeper holes here so that we get some contrast. All right, I like how that's looking. So I'm gonna accept what was accomplished in that step. And we tell it to transform the measurement series. If I want a better look, you notice anytime I move the mouse, it's gonna jump me out of that simplified workflow into the main window. I can kind of take a closer look. And if I want to go back into the simplified workflow, I just hit the right button on the uh, scanner. So I could do, you know, flip this into yet another position if I wanted to, but I'm going to say that I want to finish scanning and uh, take all the default settings for polygonization. We'll just wait a moment here for it to uh, crunch through. And there it is. There's my scan. Looks really, really nice. Probably a few places where I might have put my targets a little bit too close to the edges and it's not filling them in. That'll be easy to fix. Um, take a look at the actual mesh structure. It's really beautiful uh, job here. It does of creating these triangular facets to classify this whole part. I think I could probably do better with a little bit of practice, but for a first scan straight out of the box, I would say this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. All right. If you're interested in seeing more of the Zeiss T-Scan Hawk 2 or other Zeiss or Artec products, uh, please check back in with us at Trimax Solutions. We'd be happy to show them off to you.